Hello lovely people. For those of you who don't know me already, I'm Jessica and I'm deaf. I started to lose my hearing as a teenager and now I rely on hearing aids, lip reading and sign language. And yes, I, I know I don't sound deaf. Don't worry, I have a whole video about that. And a playlist, it's up here. It's all about deafness and what that's like for me. I also have a lovely wife, Claudia, and we had our first baby last year, little Rupert. We're bringing him up as bilingual using both sign language and spoken English. Uh, interestingly, there are two different types of sign language that we can use with him. There's either BSL, which is British Sign Language, or Sign Supported English, SSE, which is more the type that I tend to use. That means that we use signs for specific words, but they're in the order that follows spoken English. And BSL is very much its own language, it follows its own rules, um, each word will come in an order that's very specific to BSL. Because I went deaf at a later point and I'd already learnt to speak spoken English and also I have some dyslexia going on in my brain. It's uh, harder for me to understand BSL than it is to understand sign supported English. So I follow sign supported English. However, with Rupert, I use both sign supported English and BSL. So when I'm having conversations with Claudia and with Rupert together, we'll use sign supported English. But if it's just Rupert and I, we tend to use BSL because I want him to be able to use BSL and the kind of purer form of sign language, be able to understand that grammar system in a way that I really struggle with and have to translate in my brain every time from, oh God, right, clunky, uh, mm, mm, it's this to this to this to this. Point to add for those of you wondering, no, he is not currently learning Cantonese. My aunt did actually ask me this, mainly because Claudia does not speak. Cantonese as her mother did not teach her. It's something that she really really regrets um, not being able to speak to her mother in her native language. That's just one of many reasons why we're really passionate about sign language with Rupert so that he can converse with both of his parents very easily. We did a lot of research before he was born and followed the method of having one parent speak to him in one language and the other parent in the other language. However I do use my voice while signing especially while Claudia is around. Claudia also uses signs with Rupert but she isn't fluent so she tends to use more keywords. I made a previous video about getting started with sign language which you can view here card up here in the corner and I'm also going to leave the link down in the description. So today's video is an update at where we're at with sign language now Rupert is 16 months old which is incredible I don't know where that time has gone it's amazing every moment is precious I have to say even when you're in the trenches of having a newborn grab onto them every little moment because they go really quickly and suddenly you have a tiny little person talks to you goodness. So Rupert's first sign was at 12 weeks old and it was just him mimicking back a sign that we had done to him. Um, we would sign to him everything we were doing and one of the signs we used a lot was change, just to change his nappy, change, change and he signed back change which is different to him communicating himself because he was just mimicking something but now he knows a lot of other words. I mentioned in my previous video, and I should say again here, that with the signs that we use, it's really important to me that what I'm teaching him is BSL, the language, British Sign Language, um, those signs, even if I'm using sign supported English, that I'm using proper signs with him and not going along the baby sign route which are generally signs that are made up to be for babies and aren't, it's not a proper language, it's a kind of appropriation of deaf culture and it doesn't give children a grounding in something for life. And it also isn't, if you're just coming into this thinking, oh, it's going to expand my child's mind, it will help them in their language development, it's not going to do that because you're not teaching them a language. And if you're going into this thinking, you know, this would be wonderful, they'll be able to go to school and, and talk to any deaf children that they encounter. No, they won't because <laughs> deaf children are going to be speaking BSL sign language. And if your child is, only knows milk, we're gonna have a problem here. How are they going to talk to each other? Or more, I think is the, the baby sign for more, which is actually B, kind of. It is an issue because Rupert is currently in a phase of every word that begins with a B that he doesn't know the sign for. He, he says 
B. And at nursery, they use baby signs, so they think he's saying more constantly whenever a B word comes up. I mean, he probably thinks it's great because biscuit begins with a B. So if you want to learn sign language or you want to help your child to learn sign language, the best thing to do is to find a course, whether that be online, in your local area. There are also many books. You can get some DVDs if you're still in the DVD era. Do people have DVD players still? Some people must do. That is by an actually deaf person who is using the language fluently. That's very important because you're gonna to need to know so many things. It is not just about the signs, okay? Someone can be like, to sign for mama. What are you getting from that? Absolutely nothing. You're gonna to need to know their face, body. How are you moving whilst you're signing? This is giving you so much more. It's the context to this word. It's the lip patterning. You need all of these things in order to know this one word. Otherwise it's just, that could also just be an M. Okay, so let's run through the words that Rupert has learnt since the last video we made. In about seven months, he started to pick up on quite a few words. There was more. However, he's only just started to sign more correctly. He first started signing more like this. Now, as with babies, when they're babbling, their signing is quite similar in that he doesn't sign perfectly. It's not the perfect correct sign, but we know what he's saying. As a parent, you know what your child is saying when they're babbling, and it's a really similar thing with sign language. So I've written down the intentions behind his signs and the way that he used his signs, even if it wasn't perfect. And as we go through them, they're gonna tell you when he perfectly used the sign or whether it was perfect. So we say more and he'd go, I mean, that's a clap, but yes. <laughs> so he would say more and be completely sure that he was saying more. He's like, yeah, more, more. But this was also how he would say mama, which understandably, this hand shape is a bit hard for a baby, an M hand shape. So he did exactly the same kind of clap, but it was all about noticing his mouth, the intention with it, when he's saying more, more. Ma. The more or mama, if you notice my hands down, mama, mama. And he would come in as well with mama being much more, he's again still clapping his hands, but it's more one on top of the other. And it's the really subtle, tiny things that you notice. And he's seven months old, like he's a big. He's got chunky hands and stuff, so it's tiny things that you're noticing as you're going along. A lot of baby signing is about paying attention because otherwise you can might be feel disheartened and be like, I don't know if my baby is actually, is actually getting this. I don't know what's going on here. As we get into later months, you'll see that this sign becomes a very important one. I wonder what on earth of the eight different words he knows that are similar to this he's using and it's all about the body shape as I was telling you about a minute ago where his arms are positioned it's what his mouth is doing it's his face this is again what you learn when you're using sign language as a language so seven months we had change um it's a lot of potty words we oui, we oui. whenever he was doing we oui, had to tell us waving hello and bye bye rattle which he stopped doing for a number of months and has started doing again recently. This is another interesting thing with sign language is that sometimes a child will do a sign and then it goes away. It just disappears, sometimes for just a week or some weeks or months. The sign is completely gone and then it just comes back and often it will be perfect. They'll try it out for a few days and you're like, I mean, it takes a while to go, I'm not sure what that sign is, I don't know what they're trying to say. And then it comes back and you're like, that's what it was. They were working on that one in their little brain. So month eight, he said his first word, which was more. He was sat having his breakfast, his breakfast ran out, and he looked down at his empty bowl, looked up at Claudia, who was stood next to the stove, and went, more. And we're like, excuse me? <laughs> and he just went, more? And we, we did not respond to him, so he was like, 
And it was the first time, not only that he had spoken, but the first time that he had signed more correctly and not in the front palm way. So I'm like, okay. Thanks for that. Um, and then that month he just worked on making a lot of sounds verbally and didn't learn any new sign language or use much sign language actually that month. In month nine, he learned one of his favorite signs, which is baby. And he did this sign for every baby he saw. We went to shop. He would see a three-year-old in a buggy, like, baby. He would see himself in the mirror and be like, baby. He still does this sign more for his doll because it also means dolly. He then learned the first of our dog's names. We did our dog's names as Walter and Tilly and he did for the first time a W which was quite impressive actually because I think a W is quite hard. But not the second part, not the Walter, just the W. Other than that it was rain and oh pet. One of the best ways to learn a lot of words, learn a lot of signs, and just the flow of different uh, signs. And I think if you have a second language in your home that isn't used a lot, especially outside in the daily world, is just books, reading books over and over again, and just having books be read in that language. So we tend to only do books in sign language in our house because it's such a great way to make sure that that's a really rich language for him and it flows. So it's full sentences of sign language, words bleeding together. How do we move from one to another? Things like that really going together. Um, this is actually head, by the way, and light. That was his light, which he liked to look out the window in the mornings and um, he'd know it was morning by looking at the window and going, light, 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 light. And like, yes, fine, you can wake up. By 10 months, we were still on a bit of a weather roll. Um, but he'd moved on to snow. He really loves the weather. So he liked to, he enjoyed pointing outside and talking about whatever the weather was doing. No, I think he had a book actually that had um, a story about someone who lived in the snow. So that's why he liked snow so much. But yeah, he'd do it, tend to do it with one hand and he'd be like, snow. It's quite cool, it's quite stylized. Another, another sign that has to this day become a great, great favorite was Tilly, which is Tilly, we do Tilly, but he just does Tilly, which is a T, which is our other dog. And he uses this sign in the same way that children often use one word as a catch-all for many things. So they may say breakfast, but what they mean is I'm hungry and I would like to have that sandwich. Um, anything food related. So he uses Tilly um, when we're out and about to just mean, I'd really like to go home now, please. That would be great. Or he'll use Tilly when we're sat in the car to be like, just checking on where we're going. Is it home? Is it somewhere else? What's going on? Um, and he'll also use Tilly when we're in the house just to say, just can I have a check on where everyone is? I just need a rundown, please. Um, he really likes when we just inform him of everything that's going on. So Tilly to him also just means, can I have a situations check please? Comms check. I should probably say, I don't sign in my videos because I have a global audience and um, it's very confusing for everyone. We did move to two very, very important signs this month. Hungry, a vital sign. Snack, and also hair. I don't know why hair. He's not got much, we'll be honest. Hair is not something my son has a lot of. Hunger, however, is. Always hungry, that child, constantly. We did a lot of table skills that month. So he did finished whenever he was finished. We did finished with um, two thumbs up. Finished, finished. But he does with just his open hands, finished. And he very much throws his arms completely back and his entire body. This was the month that I think he really started to focus on the fact that I couldn't hear everything and he started to understand that, which is really lovely because he started to want to become my ears. And whenever he would hear a noise or whether that be like the dogs barking, the ice machine in our fridge, the doorbell ringing, um, something when we were out and about, he would tell me about it and he either says, noise, noise, so loud, 
loud noise, which we, ever since he was a little baby, we've always said to him, that there's gonna be a loud noise, there's going to be a loud noise, just to make him aware, so he wouldn't then jump. So he now tells me whenever there's a noise, just to inform me, and he'll put his hand on me. Um, he doesn't do it to Claudia, so he clearly does know that it's, it's me. At 11 months, the new signs uh, a lot of bees in them. Ball, book, bird, we worked on dog. So we've already done hungry, hungry. And this was, we had a real issue this month, the Claudia and I, not understanding why he was suddenly constantly hungry, always hungry, but hungry when he'd just eaten and hungry when there was no food around and if we picked up something that it seemed like he might want. And then we realized that what he was saying was not hungry, but that he was saying want. So he was using the want sign, but in a, just a different, in a different way. His intention was to say want, but instead he was rubbing his chest. He learned to say me and mine and want, but, his signing instead made it look like me, mine, and want. 12 months, we got pear, duck, bottle, because he actually started drinking from bottles again, because, you know, thank God for oat milk. <laughs> Cow's milk protein allergy. Orange, rabbit, hat, music, again, again, we use that one a lot. Airplane, butterfly, and phoenix, which is uh, the name of his cousin, not <laughs> not an actual phoenix. That would be a really random word for a 12-month-old to just suddenly want to use. 13 months, uh, glasses became his favourite word, and oh my gosh, it's it's really fun uh, to have a baby that signs a sign that is quite a universal one. It's fine. If people don't really know what he's signing, it's very awkward if you're in a supermarket and he points at someone wearing glasses and goes, and he's, he's just laughing because he's correct. <laughs> he loves my cousin's child, whose name is Phoebe, in the middle of that, so B, B. Flower, um, but he, obviously this, look at this, look at this. So instead his flower is again with a closed fist, which is very similar to his ice cream, which is very similar to his pig. It's a lot of very similar signs going on. Where is this week's favorite game? And then we have to point at whatever it is. Where, where? So frog, uh, interestingly he does like this and often with two hands. Cat, instead of uh, grasping inwards with his fingers, he does this. I have no idea why, <laughs> but he means cat because he'll point at a picture of a cat and do that. Uh, 14 months, he got very into motorbikes, cows, friends. He very much enjoys the word what, which is very fun because it looks like he's saying no to everyone, um, especially people who don't understand what he's saying. And if his food is hot, he now does this. 15 months, we have Apple, snapping himself in the mouth mainly. That's, that's a very new one. Apple, tired, and granddad, just granddad. So, G is about to become probably one of his new, his new letter, I think. Replacing B, G, G, granddad. H, H, because he has a lovely lady called Hazel at nursery, so he does it back and forth though. And which? because we play witch games a lot and then try and match things. So he likes just doing this. So there are some signs that Rupert knows. Interestingly, Rupert has certain words that he says in spoken English and others that he signs and some that he does both. But there are some just definite words that he does not say because the word itself is too hard. For instance, he does not say pear. He's never said pear, but he signs it. There are some things that he has never signed because the sign is quite hard, like banana, but he says nana, banana, which is a really great thing about him having two languages is that he is much 
he has a much broader uh, range of words that he is able to use to communicate with us. One of the things that we've really noticed about Rupert having access to both a spoken language and a signed language is that he's much more able to use his signed language than he is his spoken language at a, a younger age. He can put signs together, two or three words, before he's able to put together words in a, in a kind of natural way. So he can say phrases in spoken word and spoken language that we've kind of given him. So he can say, you know, I did it, I got it. Things that he's already heard being put together, but he hasn't necessarily put those spoken words together. However, in sign language, he can put together his own. So he can say, you know, like, I'm hungry, I want, uh, biscuit. That means that he has a much broader ability to communicate and from that we've really found that it's much easier to live day to day um, with a uh, communicating. If he's having some food and it's too hot, he can just tell us it's too hot. Okay, wait a minute, we'll just blow on it. For a child who isn't able to express themselves in that way, I can only think about how difficult that would be. Their only options might be to cry, to get upset, and we wouldn't know exactly what it is in that moment that is upsetting them. As a result of that, he is quite a calm, child. I think it's a great tool to give your child for them to be able to communicate much earlier than they would be able to normally. It's a lovely thing for he and I to have together for each other. So we went to Goodwood Revival last weekend. It was amazing. We looked so good. Oh my gosh. See pictures of my wife here. She looks so good in vintage by the way. I think we should start a campaign to make her dress like this all the time but that's just me. And whilst we were there it was obviously like one of the first big events that he's been to and there was a lot of noise um, which he kept telling me about which was quite cute. He was like, it's a lot of noise here, it's a lot of noise. And we were able to communicate with him in a very large crowd, a very large noisy space even whilst moving through. So Claudia's pushing the buggy with him in and I'm on a mobility scooter weaving through a crowd and because he's facing backwards and I was behind he could see me through sort of around her and I was able to sign to him, he was able to sign to me and we could talk to each other about, you know, this, don't worry, the situation's fine, like we're just gonna go and sit down, have something to eat. You know, like, you okay? You, okay? you come, you come. And I'm like, yeah, I'm coming, don't, I'm coming, I follow, I follow you. And he's like, okay, okay, yeah, you, you're coming, you're coming. That, like, that's a lovely thing to be able to have that with him, that I have my own special way of communicating with him. He is so attuned to different people. I, I nev I've never shown him, talked to him, really like had a, had a proper sit down chat about how I am deaf and I can't hear and these are my hearing aids. I guess as we've gone through life, like they, they've just been there and it's been a little bit dropped in here and there. So I'm not sure where it's come from, but it's very interesting to me that he does this thing where he'll poke his fingers in my ear and be like, is there a hearing aid in there? Oh, there isn't. Okay, don't, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, so there's a loud noise. Yeah, those dogs are barking. Loud noise, mama. Okay, yeah, I, I, I've got you. Don't worry, I'll let you know. And that's really beautiful. That's so wonderful. How does he know that? amazing. So I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for watching today's video. I just want to say a special thank you to the members of the Kelgan Fozard Club for helping me to make all these videos for you lovely people. Um, if you'd like to become a member you can just click the join button down below right next to the subscribe button which oh, if you haven't clicked that one already my goodness come on you know exactly where it is. Members get access to a monthly behind the scenes video as well as some other lovely goodies including my little face after your name in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Let me know if you have your own stories about small children learning sign language.